ought to also acknowledge that Africa was the cradle of our Judeo-Christian heritage. Sing, singers, I was glad when they said unto me, let us hear old Africa. I was glad when they said unto me. I was glad when they said unto me. Let us go to the house. Let us go into the house of the Lord. for this faithful day. Especially do we thank you for parents who gave their children a profound and deep appreciation for good learning. God, we pray that thou wouldest deliver our land from the unenlightened from the ignorant who would indeed do that wrong of infecting minds with alternative facts, who would infect minds with falsehoods. We know, O oh God, that Jesus of Nazareth was and is the embodiment a wisdom of understanding, enlightenment, and scientific discovery. And we pray that you would give Third Baptist that pit bulldog determination to always love God with mind, with hand, mm -hmm. and with heart. God, we pray for those institutions of higher education that are still in this land, institutions that gave us 
our first opportunities for learning in the Freedmen's Bureau. We thank you, O God, for Morehouse, Spelman, Fisk, Atlanta University, and all of those grounds where sons and daughters of Africa gathered in order that they would be transformed by the renewing of their minds. This is our prayer, we pray in the name of Jesus, who said one day, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. In the name of that Christ, we pray. Amen. And now, as you go to your seats, the Third Baptist Singers will sing the opening hymn, God of Our Fathers.
Pastor Amos C. Brown, Senior Pastor of the Historic Third Baptist Church of San Francisco, California. On this fateful day, Third Baptist is privileged and honored to acknowledge the graduates of our fellowship who have spent days of toil, moments of great learning, and did indeed the fulfillment of their dreams to be credentialed as graduates of institutions of higher learning. Today, we ought to also look back as we celebrate the present moment. For Third Baptist, from its very inception, has always attracted leadership that was about training the mind, disciplining the hand, enabling and empowering the people in order that we might be a credit to ourselves and a credit to God and the human race. So on this day, as pastor, I'm delighted to welcome our live stream audience to join with us as we execute this service under the leadership of our own chairperson of the Christian Education Ministry, sister who is great in serving with great dignity as a retired principal. Sister Cummings, won't you please stand and take a bow. Sister Cleo Cummings, stand up. And now we would ask all the members of the Christian Education Ministry to please stand that we may salute you. Later on in the service, we shall learn of the accomplishments of these fine students. And we shall hear again their dreams for the future. But rest assured, students, Third Baptist will always be with you. For as you demonstrate that you are lifelong learners, we will have your back and make sure that you go from one good degree of grace and good learning to the other. Give our graduates another big round of applause. And now we shall be favored with, with the selection. Rejoice greatly by the Third Baptist Singers.
Amen, amen, amen. Give it up for her. Wasn't that excellent? Let us now turn to our prayer time. Yield not to temptation, for yielding is sin. As the singers lead us, let us prepare our hearts, minds, souls, and spirits for this moment of introspective reflection.
today we ask you to remember in prayer the following persons who are on our sick and shut-in list. Donna Octavia, Juanita Bryan, Kayla Cranshaw Craig, Dan Daniels, Diane Roberson, Winifred Bailey, Valerie and Michael Fuller, Mother Ellison Hill, Amy Descalis, Mother Evelyn Lockhart, Charles Hustman, Carol Ogilvy, Mother Inez Phillips, Samuel H. Robertson, Jr., Joanna Rollins, Mother Jane Smith, Deacon Spello and Beverly Smith, Annette Lewis, Betty Smith, Dr. Isaiah Morrison, Pearlie Morgan, Ruby Shaw, Carolyn Powell, Olivia Barron, Keth Broussard, Rosie West, Sandra Kaiser Peters, Naomi Ruth Pierce, Vera Russell, Earl Wells, and Willie Pearl Williams. If there are other names, would you please call out those names now? Rochelle Smith. Laverne Baker. Are there other names? Let us continue to pray for our friends in India. And thank God today that Third Baptist responded in such an incredible way of raising over $10,000. Oh yes, we know how to show love and give expressions in these missions of mercy. And now, as we stand to our feet, Reverend Judge Beverly Phillips will pray the pastoral prayer. And in our pastor, so to speak, we include our children, youth, and adults who are celebrating today their academic achievement. Pray, Judge, for our nation. Pray that God will exercise the evil spirit and actions of division, disease, and downright devilish actions of politicians in high places and misguided people in homes and streets that are instruments of destruction and not creativity. Pray for us, Judge. Some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we will remember the name of our Lord God. Some call you Jehovah, some call you Elohim, but Jesus taught us to call you our Father. So Father, as the older generation would say, here we are, once more and again, coming into your divine presence just to say thank you, thank you. for one more day. 
Lord, we thank you because you've done so much for us all down through the years. Lord, we praise you. We magnify your holy name. Somebody ought to tell God, thank you for letting me see one more day. He didn't have to do it, but he did. We pray, oh God, that you would forgive us of all our sins and blot out every transgression. Oh God, please look on these graduates today. We pray that you would bless them in whatever their future endeavors might be. Oh God, we pray mightily that you bless the education board. Give them more vision and wisdom as to how to lead the young people. And Lord, we pray mightily for our pastor. Thank you for his visionary leadership. We thank you for his 45 years of leading us on to higher and higher heights. But now, Lord, we still have some challenges down here. It seems like many are on the sick list and have been on the list for a long time. But you said many are the afflictions of the righteous, but you delivered them of all their diseases. Oh God, we've heard about those in bereavement. We pray especially for those down in Florida suffering from this tragic mishap of the collapse. And oh God, we thank you for being so wise and wonderful to us. You held us up when our feet almost slipped. You held us up, up with the right hand of your righteousness when we didn't know how we were going to make it. You made a way out of no way. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you. If nobody else does, I thank you, Lord. Look over my shoulder. Look where you brought us from. You brought us from slavery through civil rights, affirmative action, and sometimes no action. And now, Lord, they're making all kinds of voter restrictions. And we just want to, we don't have to tell you what's going on. You know the inside from the outside. And you know the end of everything. Oh, and I know you've got a way that you can deliver us. If you did it back yonder, you can do it once more and again. And we pray now that you would stir up the Congress. Whatever needs to be done, Lord, do it right now. Change hearts and minds that they will see that justice should be given to everybody, every race, every nationality, every faith. Lord, help us. Help us, Lord, to love freely. Help us to see right from wrong. Give your people more faith that you will deliver us from every evil act. I know you're able. Yes, Lord. You've never lost a case. You're still in the healing business. You're still in the justice business. And I'm so glad that God is able, oh, he's able to do above all, above all that we're able to imagine or think. You've done it for me, so I know you can do it again and again. Do it for your people right now. Oh, Lord, bless this church in a mighty way. And we thank you for 168 years. We thank you. Send people that will have a love for the church, that will want to see it to go on further and further. And they would say, oh, how I love Jesus, because you first love me. Bless your people, we pray now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we consider it as already done, already done. Come on, church, let's give God some praise now. Know that God has done something for you. We ought to all be able to say, I never shall forget what he's done for me.
Amen, amen. And now on this wonderful day, we have two of our graduates who will in turn acknowledge our guest, Brother Lamar Daniels II, and the one thing that we will be blessed is to hear from the class speaker, Brother Hatim Mansouri. Let us now receive the greeting to our guest coming from Brother Daniels. Welcome everybody, my name is Lamar Daniel. May I, take, may I take this opportunity to welcome you all here today on behalf of Pastor Amos Brown and the Third Baptist family. It is wonderful as always to see the familiar faces of our friends and special members of our congregation. I know that you all joined this morning in, ex in exciting and heartfelt and since, since welcome to all our new members and, vis and any visitors who may be joining us today. Welcome and welcome one and all. May this ministry and this congregation offer you the opportunity to grow spiritually. We trust that the message today will uplift and encourage you as well as we all share together in fellowship. May your burdens be lifted and may you feel comfort. And as the Lord reveals his plan and purpose in your lives, may you be inspired and encouraged to be active and involved in one of many ministries that, that this body has to offer. I am the vein, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, we will bear much fruit. John 15, 5. God bless you and keep you. May this light continue to shine upon you. Amen, amen. And now, our class speaker, Brother Hatim, come. Good morning, church. Good morning. What a beautiful day, huh? Amen. Can I get an amen? amen? It's a great day, beautiful day. It's great to see all these graduates graduate. I was thinking about what I was going to say as I walked up here, and one word came to my mind, potential. Potential. As I was talking to some students earlier today, I was talking to um, Poppy over there. He just graduated from preschool. I was talking to Jason over there, just graduated from elementary school. And all I can see was limit, unlimited potential coming from these bright young men. And potential is a tricky thing because potential is not quite there yet. That's why it's called potential. What we have to do with potential is cultivate it, yeah. nurture it, yeah. try to get it to the actual. <laughs> potential is just the start. Yeah. It's preparation. The actual is the goal. It's, the, it's part of the journey to get there. And all I can think of is my story. What's, what happened with me? How my potential almost didn't get actualized. If I had just given up, there's no such thing as actual for me. It would just be potential. How many times have we seen young people with so much potential not get actualized. Tragedy over tragedy over tragedy. Why is it a tragedy? Because they lost their potential. We didn't get to see their potential actual. That's why it's a tragedy. Senseless violence. Gangs. Lack of representation. Not having a good role model in their life. Those are all things that lead to the potential not becoming the actual. That's what it is. 
And in my life, I'm an immigrant coming from North Africa, Morocco. My cousins, they're still there in North Africa, in Morocco. I could not tell you how much potential they have. They have immense potential. But the opportunities over there, they, they just like the preparation. They like the resources. You know, coming here, I see, I see it from a different perspective. We have a lot more resources compared to what my family in Morocco have. And I'm blessed for that. I'm grateful. You know, I take that. I don't take that for granted. And with that, I want to, you know, tell you that if you have the potential and you have the resources around you, when well, we do, if you're in this church, I know you do. <laughs> Pastor Brown is the biggest resource that we have right here. The church, Third Baptist, the biggest resource that we have. Being a part of this church family, this is a huge resource. I promise you, if you feel lost, talk to one of these elders. They'll help you find your place. They'll, lead you to, they'll help you lead the way. I know I have. One of the, um, one of the um, deacons or ministers that used to be here was uh, Richard Baker. And he was a lawyer. I wanted to be a lawyer. I always talked to him. He'd always show me the way. He always had some bits and niblets of knowledge here and there. Same thing with Reverend Brown and Pastor Pam. She was here too, talking in my ear all the time. We have the resources here. It's in front of your eyes. That's the potential. It's in front of your eyes. But when you touch it, that's when you can actually make it actual. Actually make it actual. And I say this to say, that I, I'm going to tell you a story that I don't tell much, many people. When I was 11 years old, I had been stabbed in a bus on my way home. It was my first time riding the bus alone. And in that moment, I saw my, my eyes, they were closed. I almost passed out. I did pass out. And in that moment, I thought, is this how I'm going to die? I thought that as 11 years old, please, there's no way this is how I'm going to die as I was passing out. Thankfully, thank God, two hours later, I woke up in a hospital, bright room, and there was 20 doctors in the room asking me questions. What's your name? Where are you from? How old are you? What school do you go to? Over and over and over. I got irritated. I was like, can you just please leave me alone? And they, they told me, Hatim. You had gotten stabbed in your abdomen, your liver, your smaller intestines. You're bleeding out. Five more minutes, you would have died. Five minutes was the difference between my life and being dead, six feet under. Ever since that moment when I was 11 years old, I have promised myself to never take life for granted. Never take my potential for granted. I have always had trouble in school. My GPA always in the twos, lows. It wasn't until I had a realization, an epiphany. Not later until much later, from 11 to 21. I'm 23 now. I had 2.0 GPAs all throughout high school. Even in my college years, my first semester, you want to believe my GPAs. <laughs> I had a 1.7. Second semester, I had 2.3. It wasn't until my junior year when I sat down and I looked myself in the mirror and I said, is this the man you want to be? Is, is, this, is this how you maximize your potential? Is this what you actually want to be? Is this who you are, Hatim? This is the conversations that we all have to look at ourselves, yeah. talk with each other, amongst ourselves, and look in the mirror and say, is this who I want to be? And it wasn't who I wanted to be. Why? Because I know who I could be. We all know who we are at the inside. We all know what we want and how to get it. It's whether or not we have the discipline to get it, whether or not we have the resources, whether or not that we have the willpower to go and get it, go and grab it. 
And that's what I did. Even though I had a two point something GPA accumulative my first two years at Morehouse, my last two years, I, I promised myself that I would do a lot better. And my last two years at Morehouse, I had a 4.0 GPA. Both semesters. <laughs> my last two years, I had a 4.0. And I graduated. I was supposed to graduate in 2020, but I graduated in 2021. Why? It's normal to have hardships. Everybody goes through them. But I wouldn't call this an accomplishment if I gave up. I had a hardship in 2020. My mom got diagnosed with cancer. It broke my heart. If I had just given up then, I wouldn't be here right now talking to you about my accomplishment. So yes, you have troubles, you get injured, you gotta get back up. You have financial troubles, you gotta get back up. <laughs> Family troubles, you gotta get back up. Who are, we, we wouldn't be alive to tell the day if we just gave up. I'll be home, me miserable. Giving up is the last thing you wanna do. You can fail, 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 that's what I did, fail, had F's, literally, failed and failed. I even dropped classes out. I dropped a total of 10 classes at Morehouse. I could have said, oh, I dropped too many classes, let me just give up. No, I kept taking the next class. You know, I didn't like this teacher, I didn't succeed in this class, let me take the next class, let me try a different teacher. Keep trying, keep trying, keep trying. You know, a lot of, a lot of students, I know, I've been there. Math is hard, science is hard, classes are hard. But if you really want to succeed, you have the tools around you. Just look it up, you know? And if, and if, if you don't know where to start, ask somebody that does. Where can I start? If you don't know the way, ask somebody that, that been there themselves. <laughs> if you have a question about school, you can even ask me. How team, how do I succeed? I'll tell you, you know? I wish I had somebody to tell me when I first started. You know, that's, that's what family's for. That's what having a church home is for, right. right? That's what loving Jesus Christ is for. Jesus has been there. We look in the Bible. We see the testimonies. These are stories to tell us how to get through our lives. The worst thing you can do is learn from your own experience when somebody else has done that for you. If you have somebody that's already been through the experience that you're trying to go through, you better go to them, ask them for the help, ask them for the insight. And I say all this to say that I'm so grateful for the people that have been around me, the support system that helped me, and for these bright new graduates that's gonna get there and actualize their potential. Coming from a single parent household, an immigrant family, I'm proud of myself to say that I didn't make it in the standard four years. I made it in the five years, graduated in Morehouse. And although I started with a low GPA at 1.7 my first year at Morehouse, I'm proud to say that I graduated with 3.2 cum laude with honors. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate you guys. Let's give a round of applause for these graduates here. Stand up. Thank you. Somebody said I'd rather see a sermon than to hear a sermon. You've heard and you have seen a sermon. One thing he did not tell you is that he was on the Morehouse debate 
14. The other thing he did not tell you is that he and other students went to Africa, had no means, Brother Raboni, but God made a way. God sent them friends. Stand up again, Brother Hatim. And this could be my sermon. In fact, it would be sacrilegious for me to deliver a sermon today. You've already heard the sermon. I never shall forget when Brother Hartim had in his heart, mind, and soul going to Morehouse. It appeared that he was not going to get there. In fact, it was at midnight that we found some arrangements to buy the ticket, Brother Wagner. But at midnight, God turned the light on. And one of the members of this church, who was so gracious and kind, said, I got some mileless plus. Help me, Holy Ghost. Did you hear what I said? I got some mileless plus. And I will buy the ticket. And our team came down to Moors at graduation time. And he had the occasion of seeing the other young men receive their sheepskin. And from that, he was inspired to keep on kicking. He was determined that he was going to make it. And he's made it because of Third Baptist, because of the loving and excellent teaching staff at Morehouse College, that would not give up on anybody, but made sure that in this life, you better understand that if you can recycle cans, help me somebody, if you can recycle cardboard boxes, God is in the recycling business of souls. And somebody ought to be made brand new today. Somebody needs to be recycled and never thrown to the dark heaps of life. But always know that we serve a Jesus who is in the garbage collecting business. For the Bible tells us that one good friend, he died. He died on Golgotha's hill. He died. And what was that hill? It was a dump heap where they put the dump and the junk but Jesus, I said Jesus, before he closed his eyes in death, saw two men, one on the right and one on the left. One railed him and made fun of him, but the other one said, that looks like somebody that I need to surround my soul. That looks like somebody who's going somewhere. And he dies like a savior. And that thief on the right side looked up and beheld the goodness of Jesus. Jesus said unto him, I know what the world has told you are, but I see in you another man, another soul, another woman, like Cartin, who can be recycled. And Jesus said, this day, thou shalt be with me in paradise. Where is paradise? More black boys going to college. Where is paradise? Not being in a prison industrial complex. Where is paradise? In Third Baptist Church, where every Sunday morning is going to school time, where every Sunday morning it is an inspiration to the soul, where every Sunday morning somebody's challenged to claim Jesus as Lord and Savior. Thank you, Hartim. Thank you. Thank you for keeping the faith, for finishing the course. And now you and your graduates can say, 
We did it because mama helped me. We did it because third Baptist helped me. We did it because daddy was in my life. We did it because somebody sent me a friend when I was lonely and all alone. And I made a way out of no way. So I want us all to stand now to see if anyone here who wants to appropriate that kind of a spirit, that kind of a Christian statement that is in action at Third Baptist, whether or not you want to be a part of this church membership, whether you want to have a family, whether you want to have a, a support system, as the choir sings the invitation, the Spirit tells me, don't follow the script today, but follow the ways of the Spirit. And we're going to open the doors of the church right now and see who would come as a candidate for baptism on watch care by a ladder of transfer, just as you are, upon your professional faith. God wants you. We need you. The door is open if you don't have a church on. If you don't have a fellowship, if you don't have a spiritual community, come on and join us. As the singers lead us, won't you come as a candidate for baptism, I repeat. On watch care, letter by transfer. Sing, singers. Some souls would rest. to your seats. The road is rough. Mm -hmm. The going gets tough. And the hills are hard to climb. I started out a long time ago. There is no doubt in my mind. I 
Just before we have the presentation of the graduates, we shall now prepare to give our tithes and offerings for the morning. And permit me to parenthetically say, members of the fellowship, loving, consistent stewards, we've done a wonderful job of being faithful in giving in spite of the pandemic. But just before we give, permit me to say, we have a goal of closing out this calendar year, the calendar fiscal year. Our calendar and fiscal year are different from following the U.S. calendar and the Roman calendar. Our calendar runs from July to June. Now, July is right around the corner. We will have our annual meeting in a few days. And if you have not been faithful in giving, or you not been prospered to give as you would like to have given, come on and help us. All we need, all we need is about $25,000 and we can do it. We had a wonderful joint meeting of deacons and trustees on yesterday, excellent meeting. Now let us, as Brother Hatim admonished us, actualize our potential. Those of you at home, I hope that you have become well-versed in how to give, to give a fly, or oh, you may just use your credit card. That plastic money works too. So please be generous. Be a part of keeping these resources going that our class speaker spoke about. That more young men and young ladies, middle-aged souls and senior citizens will be able to say, I feel like going on because Third Baptist had my back and has my back and will always be with me. Let us worship now in giving.
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. seated. And now Ms. Cummings will come and present our graduates. Thank you, Pastor Brown. Did we have any other graduates to come in while service was going on? None others came in. And at this point in time, I'm going to ask our graduates if they would all stand. Our first graduate today, who's coming from preschool, is Cortez Green, better known as Poppy. Would you please come forward? And he's going to be going to E.R. Taylor Elementary School. Next, we have Jason Anthony Winston, who's graduating from E.R. Taylor, one of my old schools. And he's going to be going to Aptus Middle School. Come forward, Jason. None of our middle school students are here, is that right? Now we come to the big people, and you're looking good. Lamar Daniels. Lamar is graduating from Gateway High School in San Francisco, and this young man is going to Fresno State in Fresno, California. And you know what? He's going to be a child psychologist. All right. <laughs> and our very own Third Baptist baby, Earl Johnson. Earl, come on. Earl. Earl graduated from Kip High School here in the city, and Earl is going to San Francisco City College. All right. <laughs> okay. And we have a lady with us who's also one of our choir members, a very faithful member, Miss Gracie Smith. And she's graduated from Skyline High School in Oakland. And guess where she's going? Where's the camera family? She's going to Fisk. Come on, yeah. Now we come to the big people. We know we have our very, very own our team. What can I say except come on down? <laughs> How 
high team is already working and he has so many things on his agenda that he's going to do, he's still doing what he said he would do. Trust me. And we also have Miss Yolanda Morsetti, and she is a graduate of San Francisco City College. And she, as you see on your program, has done a whole lot of things. She's had a full life. And you know what? I have a soft spot for City College because I'm a City College alumni myself. There's no place like City. Come on down. These are our present graduate head, many who did not show. And I want to take this time just for a moment. Now listen to what I'm going to say. Just listen real close, okay? When we have left here, the all of the graduates are going to go next door. All of the graduates are going to go next door. We're not going to have a reception, but there's something for you. Everybody except the high school graduates. Now listen, everybody except the high school graduates will see me, and you get a little red envelope, okay? All right. Everybody else, everybody's going to see Miss, Mrs. Everybody's going to see Miss Twegby to get your certificate. Now, you wondering what's going to happen to the high school graduates? You don't get a red red envelope. You know why? Because every high school graduate is going to get, by the second week in July, a $1,000 scholarship. Brown come just one minute Pastor Brown one other thing is uh, Mr. Arthur Rose here he's waiting because he's gonna come down he's gonna make somebody else very happy oh doesn't third Baptist know how to do the right thing one thousand dollars for every one of these high school, high school graduates, graduates. The chairman, is it all right? All right. My God. Good, uh, good morning, Third Baptist. I'm representing the Hudspeth Memorial Scholarship Committee. The Hudspeth Memorial Scholarship Fund was established from the estate of O.H. and Audrey Hudspeth. The fund seeks to grant scholarships to graduating seniors under the following conditions. Membership at Third Baptist Church, active at Third Baptist, service to the community, cumulative grade point average of 3.0 or B, acceptance at a four-year accredited college, submission of a completed application, uh, two letters of recommendation, and a 300-word essay. Uh, this year, the committee is happy to award a $2,000 scholarship to Grace Elizabeth Smith. So I would like to thank our overall chair, uh, Mrs. Bessie Stewart-Ross, our financial advisor, Deacon Pello Smith, and my fellow scholarship committee members, Dr. Sedonia Wilson and Reverend Portia Osborne for their valuable contributions to the work of this committee. Ms. Smith, all the best to your sister. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. now have a class portrait done.
our photographers, our president of our women's ministry, Sister Cheryl Simon, and Sister Shari Taylor. All right. Everybody come closer like they love each other. Come on. Earl reminds me he's now six feet, and I remember when he was about six inches. Amen, somebody. Everybody can take off the mask for this over. As we conclude our services, we want to fulfill a gesture here. I beg you to indulge us, Brother Wagner. Brother Wagner, will you present it? Thank you, Reverend Brown. Good morning, brothers and sisters. It's indeed my pleasure to present this plaque that was presented by Deacon Cedric Carter last Sunday to the recipient in absentia due to his loyalty and to his daughters, his three daughters, Deacon in training, Kisu Kirkwood, couldn't be here, but he was watching on live stream. He didn't know that he was gonna be the man <laughs> until he saw it on live stream. Live stream. <laughs> and as you recall, I was presiding last Sunday and I got a text from him. He was just overjoyed. So Kisu, would you please come forward and receive your recognition in person? Thank you. Um, like he said, uh, I, I was watching last week and uh, I was beyond surprised. Um, grew up in this church. This means a lot to me to be uh, recognized for doing what y'all taught me to do. Um, so this is this is this is this is an award for all of us. Um, I thank you. Um, I'd like to thank. My kids, you know, stand up. That's uh, Stacia and Mia, uh, 16 year old twins. Had them since they was three years old. And uh, it's been a journey, it's not over. Um, I need y'all help. Um, we got two years before we get them off to college. And, uh, you know, I, I take this very seriously. Um, and I just appreciate being uh, acknowledged in this manner by this church body. It, it means a lot to me. And uh, to the graduates, I just want to say that never let anybody define your worth. Know what you're worth. And, 
Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will have momentarily the benediction. And before the benediction, let me say that the NACP will be meeting today at 3 o'clock sharp here in the sanctuary. And we need you to come, if you can. Why? Because in general, the leadership of the fire department is not being fair with African Americans in terms of giving them the opportunity to go higher up in that department. And the other reason you should be here, they are messing with one of our members. Cherish Murdoch. And I say that without apology. We are going to go to the bat. We're going to put our boxing gloves on. And that's the reason why many didn't understand it, but if you hang around, hang with me long enough, you will understand. I said the other day in that San Francisco Chronicle article without any disparaging put down, but just telling the truth, the only thing that San Francisco is progressive and liberal on is sex. But when it comes to being liberal with making equality of opportunity available for blacks, us, we're just as bad as the Deep South. So the fight is not over. We got to fight on. And you never know when it may be you the next time who was being treated unfairly. So let us now prepare for the benediction as Brother Jason Anthony Winston comes and gives us the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and love and give you peace. Amen. 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 Amen.